Coming up on today's Golden State Warriors today, could the Dubs trade Chris Paul? You think about it, right? On draft night, when they traded away Jordan Poole and Patrick Baldwin for the rights to CP3, it didn't make a ton of sense at the time. So was flipping CP3 and acquiring him the plan all along? We're going to talk about that, dissect it, and take a look at some trade ideas. But first, if a trade does happen, if a move does happen, we always have you covered here on Warriors Today, your home for year-round coverage of the dubs. We're on the road to 60,000 subscribers, so join the movement here on Warriors Today. We also want to know where you're tuned in from. We absolutely love our subscribers because being able to give you daily content wouldn't be possible without all of your support. And I know that we have people tuned in from literally all across the globe, so let us know specifically where you are watching from. So the pluses of keeping Chris Paul on this roster. He is a veteran playmaker who can really, really help Steph Curry from a scoring standpoint, creating standpoint, and handling the basketball. With Chris Paul as compared to Jordan Poole, CP3 won't take bad shots, ill-advised shots, and he won't turn it over. Those were issues with Jordan Poole. You need a point guard to run that second unit. Now, the Dubs did bring in Corey Joseph, and I think that sometimes they put too much of an emphasis of stacking up that backcourt, and they ignore the needs in that front court. but they bring in Corey Joseph, Chris Paul, and Steph Curry. Those are three different guys who can handle the basketball, but all of them can also play off-ball as well. And CP3, one of the best backup point guards at the NBA level, if not the best. So you get that secondary creator outside of Steph Curry. I also think this is an underrated talking point. Steph Curry is going to be able to play alongside Chris Paul. Steph Curry can really thrive playing the two. And I think the benefit of Steph playing off ball and not having to take the ball up, create, initiate the offense on every single possession, it'll allow him to store his energy. He can conserve his energy a little bit and he's going to be able to stack up some moments where he can get a little bit of a rest in the regular season as well as in the playoffs. But when he's on the floor, he can just kind of float around that three-point arc. You think about how much he runs in a game, do yourselves a favor. Like, go back and watch any Warriors game and just watch Steph Curry move around. This dude logs miles and miles every single night because he's always moving. And Chris Paul is going to be able to find him on some of those actions. But with Steph Curry not having to also handle the basketball, I think it just helps save him a little bit for late in the year when the Dubs want him fresh, fresh and prime for a playoff run. And then lastly, Chris Paul, I think, can unlock a different dimension of Jonathan Kaminga. Kaminga needs to mature a little bit. And I think that Kaminga has all of the potential in the world to be a really special player in this league. But that lack of maturity, I think, has bothered Steve Kerr a little bit. The basketball immaturity has kept him from seeing the floor consistently. I think Chris Paul is going to be able to help him there as a great veteran leader. But on the court, the two-man game that they can work and Chris Paul being able to find Jonathan Kaminga, direct him on the floor, tell him where to go at any given moment, I think could allow Kaminga to see the game differently. The game could slow down for him a little bit, and he could be a little bit more productive. As for the downsides of keeping Chris Paul, he does not help one of your existing problems, and that was a lack of size for Golden State. Against the Lakers, it became blatantly clear that the Dubs need some more bulk, they need some more length, athleticism, and height, and the Lakers were able to expose that over the course of that six-game series. CP3 is also 38 years old. He's very expensive. The downside with him being expensive costs a lot of money this year. The good thing and the good spin to that, it's the last year of his contract, so you can move off of that as you look forward, you can also backload that Draymond Green contract to a certain degree so that you can afford him down the road and maybe Clay Thompson as well because of that one-year expiring deal for Chris Paul. CP3 also injured a lot throughout the playoffs. Like He has some really bad injury misfortune. It's been unfortunate because in 2018 when he was playing alongside James Harden with the Houston Rockets, I thought that Houston had an opportunity to take down Golden State so CP3 and the Beard could have gotten their first rings. Obviously, it worked out better for the Dubs 
And throughout his career, there have been moments where he's gotten injured at the most inopportune of times, and that certainly cost him in his championship quest as well as the team. And then lastly, CP3 by no means is elite defensively at this point of his career. Throughout his career, when he's a little bit younger, he was a solid defender at that point guard spot. But right now, he struggles a little bit on that end. So when he is playing on the floor alongside Steph Curry, those are two smaller guards who can get taken advantage of on the defensive end. Production, though, hasn't really been a problem for Chris Paul, and I don't think it's going to be a problem for Golden State this year. CP3 this past season, obviously 59 games played, many of those starts, 14 points per game, 9 assists, a steal and a half per game, 44% from the field. While he is not the greatest defensive player, he is smart enough to pick up some steals with his awareness and anticipation. A couple of years ago, CP3 was in the running to an MVP. I thought that Thunder season was really impressive, guided them to the NBA playoffs and the NBA bubble. Everybody thought OKC was going to be awful. CP3 helped change that culture. He helped change the culture for the Phoenix Suns and led them to the NBA Finals. He doesn't need to change the culture at all for Golden State. He's only going to add to it. So with that, let's segue here to our Chris Paul trade ideas. Think about if the Warriors wanted to bring him in as an asset and then they get rid of him to improve the basketball team speculatively. These are some moves they could make. The money certainly matches here. If you sent Chris Paul, Gary Payton II, and a 2026 first-round pick to the Timberwolves, and in exchange, you get Carl Anthony Towns, who immediately helps you because you need a big. And a big who can also stretch the floor could do wonders for this basketball team, given the current construct of it, with Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, Andrew Wiggins playing on the floor here. Cat is a modern-day big who can knock down the three at a really, really high level. His last few years, you see 2020, 2021, 2021, 22, and then 22, 23. He's hovering there between 36 and 41% from downtown. And a floor stretcher opens up some driving opportunities for the other players on this team. Not a great defender, especially against some of the other top tier bigs in this league, but he can easily give you 20 points and 8 to 10 rebounds per night while knocking down those three point shots. So let me ask you this question. If you could pick a player between these two, Cat and CP3, two very good nicknames, by the way, who would you go with? This will be our pinned comment for today's show. So if you get hit with that YouTube ad break, scroll on down and get those votes in. Trade idea number two for CP3. You send him to the Chicago Bulls, where they have been desperate for a point guard over the last couple of years since that Lonzo Ball unfortunate injury. Moses Moody also gives Chicago a shooter. You send him a 2028 first round pick, and you, in exchange, get a hyper scoring wing here in Zach Levine, who has no issues in getting a bucket. In fact, he's one of the best bucket getters in the sport. He can finish around the rim as well. He finished inside 10 feet at about a 63% clip a year ago. And 25 points per game last year, 37.5% from three. Over the last three years combined, he's been right around that 37% three-point mark. So he can dribble. He can be a catch-and-shoot guy. He can walk into his shot. He could be a part of this offensive system. And I think Steve Kerr would be able to maximize him and bring out the best in Zach Levine as a guy who can be a more willing defender because up to this point has not been a great defender in this league. Bottom line here, you bring in Zach Levine, he's going to be a bucket getter. who's not going to demand the basketball. So I don't think it gets in the way of having, you know, Steph Curry and Andrew Wiggins and Klay Thompson. Zach Levine can do his thing, hover around that three-point arc. And as a backdoor cutter and a slasher, I also like that with his ability to finish around the 10. Trade idea number three. This one's pretty interesting. The Warriors get Paul George, very good wing, and Nicholas Batoon to beef up that front court. Also as a guy who could play the four, play the five, and knock down some three-pointers. Because you bring in Paul George here, and I guess you could throw Andrew Wiggins in that Bulls trade as well, but because the Dubs bring in Paul George, a two-way wing, you have to give away a wing who's also a two-way guy in Andrew Wiggins. The problem with Paul George has been the lack of games played, has not played more than 54 games over the last five years, but my goodness, when he is able to stay on the floor, Paul George 
is a very, very good player who can guard some of the best offensive players in the league. And anytime you give him the rock, he's able to find Twine really from anywhere. If any of you want more coverage here of the Golden State Warriors, just make sure you subscribe to the show. It's youtube.com slash Warriors TV because any move that the dubs make, we have you covered here on the show. And I do want to ask you this. Which trade idea do you like the best among those three trade ideas? Type one, two, or three. Here's that first trade between the Dubs and Minnesota. Warriors receive Carl Anthony Towns going to the land of 1,000 lakes. Chris Paul, Gary Payton II, and a 2026 first-round pick. Trade idea number two. Dubs get Zach Levine. You send away Chris Paul, Moses Moody, and a 2028 first-round pick. And then trade idea number three, Paul George Nicholas Batum to the Dubs. The Clippers receive Chris Paul as well as Andrew Wiggins. Feel free to interact with me on Twitter and Instagram. I've had viewers of the show really reach out to me from everywhere. Greece, Philippines, America. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Chase underscore Senior. I'm also on threads as well if you're over there at Chase underscore Senior as well.